It's happening. Boy, this video has been a long time coming, and it's not that I haven't wanted to make it, but there's a lot to cover here. So, several months ago I had a shootout comparison between several video cameras for cinematic real estate tour videos, including the Blackmagic Pocket 6K that I'm filming on right now. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. I'll leave a card right there. <laughs> so since then, I've purchased a red Komodo and I've been using it as my primary real estate video camera for several months since I've had it. Replacing the A7S III in that role. So does it have enough to knock out the reigning champ, the A7S III? So we're gonna find out. This is gonna be a two-part video series. In this part, the first part, it's gonna be introducing the features of these two cameras specific to cinematic real estate tour videos. The reason I frame it like that is because like with all things real estate, there are some unusual needs that cameras really are designed to accommodate. Interiors, photographers and videographers are an extraordinarily small slice of these manufacturers target market after all. So in this first part, I plan to define the features of each of these two cameras and share the pros and cons of each. However, as I thought about it more, and this is one of the reasons it took me so long to make this video, I realized that both of these cameras are extraordinarily close as it pertains to which one is better for real estate work, but in very different ways. In fact, I decided instead of defining pros and cons, just to give one pro, one con for each camera system. You see, both of these cameras are fantastic. And with only a few exceptions, they just get out of your way and, and let you work, much like most modern cameras do. The difference here is that each of these two cameras have one strength that cannot be found in any other camera, and one weakness that may be a deal breaker for you. More poetic yet, is that the strengths and the weaknesses of each of these cameras are swapped 180 degrees from each other, meaning the best part of one of these happens to be the worst part of the other. So let's get into it. And we'll start here with the Sony a7S III. The reason this camera is so attractive for real estate video has a lot to do with its ability to shoot high frame rate, full frame 4K. Even in this day and age, it stands out amongst most other cameras in that regard. 10-bit 422 even. So the biggest strength of the A7S III, without a doubt, its focusing system. More specifically, its tap to track focusing system. See, most of us shooting real estate are making heavy use of gimbals and running gunning with a gimbal by yourself while pulling focus manually, while certainly doable, is less than ideal. So before the A7S III, any camera I had with autofocus I just couldn't trust. Tried it a few times with other cameras and I'd always have to either edit around focus hunts or misses. Pain in the rear, really. Well, the A7S III changed that. Now I can shoot wide open even. Tap on a piece of furniture and roll my shot. It's reliable, it's sticky, and it's a game changer. Aside from the workflow advantages, which are huge, I feel I can just get shots that I couldn't otherwise. Given enough time on site with a manual focusing system, of course you can get those shots, but real estate, you gotta be in and out, right? This is run and gun stuff. So moving on to the Komodo, because we're talking about advantages here. Its biggest advantage, is really the same thing as what makes this camera a great option for real estate video. The image is nuts. It does have more dynamic range. I know that's been a point of contention in the past. It does, and it rolls off the highlights in a much rounder and smoother way, even if they're clipping. And the IPP2 workflow is a godsend compared to the 10-bit type of stuff. So, 
Remember how they were opposite of each other? Well, it's no secret if you watch any of my recent content that I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder about the A7S3's image. And please don't get me wrong. I own and enjoy it immensely. It's a really, really nice camera. But it's not the same camera as all the YouTubers would have you believe. It's noisy. Like, really noisy. And when it's not really noisy, it's plasticky and smeary because it's getting hammered by non-defeatable noise reduction in body. It's clean up to about ISO 1600, and you better hope that if you're shooting 1600, you don't want to raise any shadows in post, or it ain't gonna be good for you. The only thing to do at that point would be to jump to the 12,800 gain stage where it does clean up, but it is hammered with noise reduction. This is, by the way, why the, the paid YouTubers touted as having so much dynamic range. Those bottom couple stops are pulled from the noise floor by its smoothing. So like I said, fantastic camera, but know what it is that you're buying. The other part of the A7S III image drawback is its 10-bit codec. More specifically, but not limited to, its lack of luminance grading latitude. So don't get me wrong here, it's a lot better than the older 8-bit Sony bodies, which in my opinion shouldn't even have had log curves in them, but if what you're used to using is those 8-bit log curves or even 10-bit log, the 12-bit raw, say of the Black Magic, or the 16-bit raw of the red is gonna wake you up in a hurry. So the counterpoint here, because now we've heard the good and the bad with the A7S III, the thing that despite its 10-bit XAVC, which is no good, codec that gives the Sony a fighting chance against the RED is the RED's biggest weakness, and that's workflow on site. Now, before you thumbs down or start smashing your keyboards about that, let me explain. Remember, we're framing this in the world of real estate videos. So real estate videos are largely a commodity, as much as that sucks. That means you have to move quickly. Yes, I know the Komodo is much faster than legacy RED cameras. I have one of those cameras, I get it. But between the manual focus pulling, the crop sensor, as it relates to available well-corrected ultra-wide glass, black shading, balancing of a bigger, heavier camera, no internal stabilization, and the lack of ability to shoot high frame rate, that's a big one, I can move way faster with the A7S III. Like, it, it's not even close. So which then am I going to primarily use going forward? If the RED had the A7S III's focusing ability, or if the A7S III shot RED RAW, it wouldn't matter much, but it does. And for my answer, and why my answer is also framed within my unique needs, stay tuned for part two.